But I am excited to preach this morning, and I feel the presence of the Lord. Could you turn with me to John chapter 6, verse 34. What I'm about to preach is heavily influenced by uh, Brother Scott Graham's message at camp called, Would You Like Some God With That? This is not a, um, a copy, but there are some things uh, that he brought out in that message that were wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, John chapter 6, and there's verse 34, And they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. What a wonderful statement from Jesus Christ. I want to preach to you under this title for the next couple of moments, Symptoms of the Starving. Symptoms of the Starving. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you right now, God. We we pray, Lord Jesus, that your anointing would be upon me. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that you would help me, Lord Jesus, to preach this message that has been upon my heart for weeks now, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that you would speak to your people, that you would speak through me, God. I need an anointing that comes directly from you, Lord Jesus. For without this anointing, God, it is nothing more than just oratory. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help me to preach in the most apostolic manner possible. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. I thank you, Lord God, for what you will do, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Symptoms of the starving. I... um. I was sitting in my dining room last week preparing for what I would have preached last Sunday night, and this title came to me, and it's one of the very few times in my life where God has given me a specific title, and it was easy for me to find what he was trying to say. If you were to talk to the United Nations from a humanitarian aspect and ask them what is the biggest problem in the world. They would tell you that it is not terrorism and it is not trade deficits. According to the UN, the biggest problem in the world is starvation. And I have, we all had, or we all do have, uh, an idea of what starvation is and what it looks like. We have seen, because we are blessed in this country not to have to deal with that, even though sometimes we use the statement, I'm starving to death. And uh, the, the things I'm going to talk about here do not apply to you if you've fasted. You're not starving if you're fasting. Um, I, the, the, the longest I've ever made a fast was about three days, and after that I thought I was going to die. But what I'm talking about is, is actual starvation. There's, a, there's a, a distinct difference between being hungry and being starving. Um, the, the things that we're used to seeing, we're used to seeing, there, there's two images that really stick out in our minds when we think of starvation. One is the, the image of the Holocaust survivors when they were um, when they came when they were liberated through uh, the the forces of the Allied powers in World War II, we're used to looking at those pictures and seeing those those poor people as they were completely emaciated and they they were were not they they were barely hanging on to life. Uh, the other image that we're used to seeing, and, and I, again, I mean no disrespect by this, is the small African children with bellies that are bloated out, and, uh, and we're used to seeing them in these horrible instances where there seems to be no food. And, um, and those are the two typical 
ideas that we have when we say starvation. Those are the two things that we, that garner, the images that garner in my mind at least when we talk about famine and, and those, that, that shortage of food. The, the symptoms of starvation are very, very clear. What happens to your body after you reach a certain point is there is a shrinkage of your vital organs as your heart, lungs, and reproductive organs begin a gradual loss of their functions. There is chronic diarrhea, there is anemia, there is reduction in muscle mass and consequent weakness. Lowered body temperature combined with extreme sensitivity to the cold. There's decreased ability, this is interesting, to digest food because of lack of digestive acid production. So it's possible for you to be starving and then eat and then die because you've just eaten. It happened quite a bit in the concentration camps when the, when the Allied troops would come through. These people were so hungry and so starving that they would give them too much food and they would not wake up in the morning because they died because they did not have the ability to digest food. Irritability and difficulty with mental concentration immune deficiency, and swelling from fluid under the skin. Complete starvation in adults leads to death within 8 to 12 weeks in most cases. In the final stages of starvation, adult humans experience a variety of neurological and psychiatric symptoms, including hallucinations and convulsions, as well as severe muscle pain and disturbances in heart rhythm. In children, chronic malnutrition is marked by growth retardation. Anemia is the first sign to appear in an adult. The swelling of the legs next is due to a drop of the protein in content of the blood. Loss of resistance to infection follows next, along with poor wound healing. There is also progressive weakness and difficulty swallowing, which may lead to inhaling food. We understand what that means, that you cannot actually get food to your stomach. It, it, it is inhaled into your lungs because you cannot swallow properly. At the same time, the signs of specific nutrient deficiencies may appear. Medically, you're considered starving when you've lost 30% of your body fat. Some studies indicate that once you lose 40% of your body fat, death is inevitable. And so starvation is a very serious ordeal. And what I, the thing, though, that uh, shocked me the most about starving people isn't that they don't have any food. Starving people actually do have food. The problem is that starving people don't have the right kind of food. And so this image that we talked about earlier of the small child with a bloated stomach, that is a, a result or that is a condition called, and, and bear with me, quash, quashicor. And what it means is that they have superior malnutrition based on eating only the wrong kind of food. And it results from a food that is only based on rice and corn. And so the interesting thing is the, the first thing that everyone wants to do for starving children in Africa is give them rice. And that is the reason why they're dying, is because we're giving them rice and nothing else. And so I began to think of that, and it was moved completely. You, you cannot look at those pictures, and you cannot read the stories of the starving people and not be moved. There's, there's something inside of you that's dead if you aren't at least moved a little bit. 
by the, the, the images of these starving children. The one that stuck out the most to me was this, this poor African child that was still alive and, and he was laying face down in the, the ground to get a little bit of rest and right behind him was a buzzard just waiting for him to, to die so that the buzzard could feast on his poor little corpse. There are symptoms of starvation. And I do not want to hijack the cause of world hunger to preach a message here this morning. But I realized that the UN is absolutely right. That the worst problem in the world is both physical starvation and also spiritual starvation. That, that people in in all of in all that they are even if they're well fed physically if they are not well fed spiritually then they're going to start to exhibit specific symptoms and i i want to let you know that there is a way out of starvation here this morning i began to look at the the physical the physical um symptoms of starvation and compared them with the, the spiritual. Shrinkage of vital organs such as the heart, lungs, and reproductive organs and their loss of the, the gradual loss of their functions. Spiritually, if you're starving, you're going to lose love and compassion. Your ability to reproduce yourself in the church is going to go away. You are starving spiritually if you cannot look at the lost people of this city or this world and be moved. You are starving spiritually if you cannot feel the cry of the lost. There is something that is desperately wrong with the apostolic young person, apostolic old person, apostolic middle-aged person, if they cannot stand in the midst of lost people and be affected just a little bit. The lost are starving. The lost need God. The lost are, are desperately searching for something. There is a reduction in muscle mass and consequent weakness in a physical starving person. But in a spiritually starving person, there is an inability to cope with temptation. There is weak resolve and lack of commitment. That in a spiritually starving person, there is no ability to stand against the wiles of the devil. That they are incapable of a prayer life because they have lost the muscle mass to get down on their knees and pray. There is a decreased ability to digest food and a lack of digestive acid production. In the spiritual, there is the inability to handle the conviction of God when it comes. There is the inability to digest the word of God as it's preached. There is the the inability to understand what God is trying to tell you. There is irritability and difficulty with mental concentration. There are in the spiritual bad attitudes and difficulty to focus upon the important issues of redemption and reaching the lost. There is the immune deficiency that results from from not having the right vitamins in your system from eating. In the spiritual, there is the inability to fight off certain ailments such as depression, oppression, and bad attitudes. And because of this immune deficiency, the idea of unforgiveness and bitterness starts to take root in the life of a spiritually starved person. The last one is swelling from fluid under the skin. And this one might sound a bit strange, but I believe that is the, in the spiritual, that is extreme self-centeredness. Where everything is about me. There is the me mentality that how does this trial affect me? How am I going to get something out of church? What am I going to do? What are they going to give me? What is the preacher going to entertain me with? Why isn't anybody talking to me? Why, why are people not listening to my ideas? Why are people just letting me go by? That person didn't shake my hand.
hand. There's a, an extreme self-centeredness that that is the last part of the, of the starvation process is that when it becomes entirely about you and not about the church and not about God and not about the lost, that is the last place that starvation will hit you. It'll make you walk around looking at in the mirror thinking about yourself and yourself only. Self-centeredness. It is a demonic spirit straight from the pits of hell. It's all about me. What can I get out of it? But I'm here to let you know that there is a way to get out of starvation here this morning. That I'm not here to beat anybody over the head. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to let anybody know about any specific situation. But what I am here to let you know is that every day we need a fresh move of God in our life. There has to be something. There has to be sustenance in your life. The only way to solve starvation is to start to eat and drink correctly. The only way to solve starvation is to slowly introduce food and water back into your system. And so I'm here to let you know that there is a way to slowly introduce the right kinds of things into your system. It amazes me that we live in in a world that is filled with so much knowledge and so much technology, but we have so many stupid people walking around. We have learned quite well that what you take in your physical body will have an effect upon you. I was getting dressed this morning and I said to Olivia, these pants don't quite fit me quite as well as they used to. Somebody say number one at Wendy's. That chicken sandwich that I had last week was coming to talk back to me. We've learned that what you take into your body is going to affect it. And that's the problem with those starving little Biafra children with those bloated bellies. They're taking the wrong kinds of things in. I'm here to let you know that we live in a world that is replete with all kinds of things to take in, but none of it is the right stuff. We live in a world completely obsessed with entertainment. Now this is going to hurt. Completely obsessed with entertainment. We talk about how bad the economy is, but let there be a real good movie come out in the theaters and the American people shell out about $40 billion. Where did it come from? We talk about having a national debt, $16 trillion and growing every single day exponentially. And we can't seem to pay that off, but we can get a Hollywood movie in one weekend to make $4 billion. It's the wrong stuff. People that... Whatever spirits you entertain, you're going to be like them. Let me just just echo a word of warning here to you tonight. If you always entertain yourself with worldly pursuits, that's what you're going to be like. If all you ever do is sit down and watch Netflix, you're going to start to take on the properties of whatever it is that you're ingesting. If you sit and listen to worldly music forever, you're going to take on the properties of that which you are allowing into your life. It's not comfortable, but if if that's what we do all the time, we're going to wonder why we're spiritually starving. 
There has to be a word of God in our life every single day. I'm reminded of what G, what what Satan told Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 4. He said, if you're the son of God, command that these stones be turned to bread. But Jesus answered him and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Satan was trying to get him to look at the temporal things. Have a little bit of entertainment. Have a little bit of, of ease. Have a, just a little bit. To just, just sit down and don't do anything. Just, just make it all right. Just relax a little bit, Jesus. The temporal was calling. He was trying to get him to, to change his calling from being the Messiah to being just like everybody else in this world. But there is a way out of starvation here this morning. Jesus said that I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. The, and this is where Scott Graham really influences this message. He preached such a wonderful message on Thursday night, and he brought out a very interesting fact that the 20th century fails to realize. Bread was not a side dish back in the day. Right? We... We go to a restaurant, this, these are his, this is his example. We go to a restaurant, and they bring out bread, and they hand it to us. That's not the main course. We just eat it. It's right there. It's become completely ubiquitous to the restaurant experience, so that when you sit down, you know, for the most part, there's going to be bread or breadsticks or some muffins or something like that that they bring out. But... In the Bible days, when they said bread, that was the main course. And so when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he was talking about being the main course. He wasn't talking about being a side dish. He wasn't talking about being a, a, a small part of the meal. He was talking about being the whole thing. And so there is how we star, or how we, we reverse the symptoms of starvation, is that we make Jesus the main course, that we make the church the main course, that we make the, we make God be the very center of everything that we do. Listen, Jesus cannot be something that you do on the weekends. He cannot just be something that you do twice on Sunday, once on on Wednesday. You're going to have spiritual starvation if the only time you lift your hands, the only time you crack your Bible open, the only time you kneel before the Lord is when you're at church. That doesn't feel good, does it? But it is the absolute word of God. God is not interested in people who keep him as a hobby. God is not interested in people who only want him twice on Sunday, once on Wednesday. God is looking for people who come to him as the bread of life. He's looking for people that want to make him the main course. He's looking for people that are willing to be let him be God in their life. Spiritually starving people cannot save the world. Spiritually starving people cannot pray for the sick. Spiritually starving people cannot teach a Bible study effectively. Spiritually starving people will not see miracles in their life. And if you get enough spiritually starved people together, you're going to have a spiritually starved church. I don't want to go to a spiritually starved church. I don't want to be a part of an anemic body of Christ. But I want to be part of a strong apostolic church that has no hunger in its soul, but that 
for Jesus Christ. I don't want to be starving today. When we begin to replace the moving of God for the right song, when we begin to, to hope that the slides look correct more than we pray about what's on them, when we begin to replace the anointing with emotion, when we begin to, to hope that a program will do what God should be doing in the first place, you can guarantee you're sitting in a spiritually starving church. But I'm happy this morning to tell you that there is no need to be starving in this church there is no need to leave this place spiritually hungry there is no need to this morning to think that you could walk out of here with a void in your soul that cannot be filled Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled Starving people have a need in their life. Starving people have an emptiness in them. There's a a God-sized hole in everyone. And you can try and fill it with anything you want, but it doesn't work. And that, I believe, is the reason why The world is in such an awful state that we find it in today. Crime has become rampant. Families are dying. Countries are being plunged into sinful practices. We have the the breakdown of the family unit because instead of keeping the bread at the middle of their life, they put it off to the side and search for other things. I'm here to let you know that if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. But if you're willing to put righteousness off to the side and hope that you'll eat it while you're waiting on the main course, you're never going to be filled. I'm here to let you know this morning that you can be filled, that you can can be set free, that you can walk out of this place completely full of the Holy Ghost, but not if it's just another side dish, not if it's just something sitting off to the side that you save for when you get a grumble in your stomach. The spiritual food that I'm talking about is the Word of God. It is the Word of God that will change your life. It is the Word of God. And I don't mean to take away anything that we do as a church. Please, don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. It is not only the singing and the wonderful presence that we feel when we begin to sing and exalt the name of Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. We need that. You can't have the Word of God without that. But it's the Word of God that changes. It is the Word of God that sets free. That's why Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, not the temporary things that we do, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. There has to be a fresh Word of God in your life every single day. Every single day. You have got to get a hold of God every single day of your life. There has to be this experience with God. The Israelites were, were wandering around the desert for 40 years. They, they had no idea what they were going to eat, what they were going to do. But the Bible says that there was manna that came from heaven every single day, except for Sundays. They would have to save it on Saturday for twice, you know, for the most part, every single day. There had to be manna in their life. And if they didn't get out of their tent in time to go get it, it would be gone. They could miss their chance at getting what God had provided for them. I think it would be a travesty. 
for anyone to leave the service still empty, still starving, still searching about for trying to trying to fill that void that's in their life, trying to to find a way to put a to put a, a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't work. That's what's that's what what we try to do when we try to fill this emptiness, this hunger for God. Job said, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. This is where the spiritual and the physical collided. Job said that even though I should probably be eating physically, I'd rather push the plate away to hear the words of God. I'd rather push the temporal away and focus on the eternal. I don't know what state you're in this morning spiritually. I don't know what level of starvation you find yourself in. But here's the thing you need to do. You need to eat. And that sounds awfully simple. But the only way to cure starvation and the only way to get rid of the symptoms is to solve the problem. We have too many people trying to to fix the symptoms rather than wanting to fix the problem. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And there, in that simple statement, in that that simple few words, solves most of the world's problems. That if you would just let him be God in your life, everything else will line up. If you would just let God be God and stop worrying about trying to fix the symptoms of starvation because you haven't eaten from that bread of life for so long, everything will line up. Trust me, I know more stories about people who have let God be God and see the success in their life that they are not spiritually starving. God is not an evil God. He's not up there trying to to make you feel bad about yourself. He wants to make sure you're well fed. God wants you to make sure that you're well fed. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be complete. The Bible says in Colossians that we are complete in Him. The final work of our life to complete us is Jesus Christ. I wonder if we can stand together this morning. They said unto him, Lord, give us this bread always. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. We are human beings this morning. We require input to live. We require external forces such as food to sustain ourselves. But we have this God who is called the self-existent one. The word Jehovah means self-existent one. In layman's terms, I am. If we were to think in that, in that way about ourselves, we would have to call ourselves the I will not be. Because we have to have external input. And so when the 
When Jesus was talking in John chapter 6, this is right after he has fed the 5,000. This is right after this, this massive miracle of, of taking 12 loaves and two fishes, or, or five loaves and two fishes, and, and, and breaking them up and feeding 5,000 people. And he starts to talk about the bread of life and how if they would eat it, they would never hunger anymore. And they think he's talking about actual bread. They think he's, he's talking about some sort of wonder bread. That's actually a name brand of bread, if you didn't know. And he says, they, they say to him, God, give us this bread always. Give it to us so we don't have to. Their thinking is, give it to us so we don't have to worry about this external input. Give it, give it to us so we don't have to slave over an oven all day long making bread. Give it to us so we don't have to worry about getting food anymore. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. There's a, uh, there's a concept there. Where the infinite, unchangeable, and self-existent God is saying, come to me. And I'll give you some of my self-existence. That you don't have to worry about spiritual things anymore. Not saying that you don't have to go to church, all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. Saying that your search is over. That the bread that you've been looking for, the thing that you have been longing, that... That, that, that hole in your life that you keep trying to plug things into and it never seems to fit. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I will be your sustenance. I will be the thing that, that you have always looked for. And Jesus said in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears me and answers, I will come into him and I will sup with him. That word sup means I will eat with him. I'll have a meal with him. If you open the door to Jesus Christ, you're not opening the door to just a little hobby. You're not opening the door to just a little tiny portion of your life. But you're opening the door to the bread of life. So I don't know what, what you're facing here this morning. I don't know what kind, of, what kind of battle you're fighting. I don't know what kind of um, issues that you're having. But I guarantee you, if you're spiritually starving this morning, that list of things that, that I read earlier, you've lost your love, you've lost your compassion, you have the inability to face temptation, you, you have a lack of commitment, and you, you cannot handle conviction anymore. You cannot understand the Word of God. If you've got a bad attitude, you've got a difficulty to focus upon the big issues of life. If you cannot fight off certain things like spiritual ailments, like depression or oppression, if you, if you have a bad attitude, if you have unforgiveness, if you're self-centered you're spiritually starving and the master this morning is standing at the door knocking if any man will hear me if any woman will hear me if any child will hear me this morning I'm going to come in and I'm going to be the bread of life in your life so I want to open these altars up to anybody this morning that if you're if you're needing another bite, if you're not quite full this morning, if you have the wrong 
kind of food in your life, if you've been eating the wrong things, if you've been ingesting stuff that's, that's not going to do any good for you, then please come and take another bite. I know a king that wants to have lunch with you here this morning. I know a king that's knocking on the door and says, don't worry about anything. I brought everything I need as soon as I walked in. God can be the I am of your situation no matter what it is. This morning, you can leave this place spiritually full. You can leave this place having lack of nothing in your life because the very King of Kings, the very self-existent one, gave a piece of himself to you. Let's begin to lift our hands right now, church. Let's begin to seek after God right now. In Jesus' name. Lord God, we know that you are the bread of life. Lord Jesus, we know that the more of you get, the be- of you that we get, the better off we're going to be. I pray in Jesus' name that, God, there be nobody that leaves this place spiritually starving, Lord Jesus. I pray right now in Jesus' name that there be nobody, Lord God, that would be turned away. I know, Lord Jesus, that you've got enough for everyone, God. Lord Jesus, if there's anybody here that hasn't fully made the decision to turn their life completely over to you, they're holding a little portion back. I pray in Jesus' name that your conviction would be upon them, God. That, Lord Jesus, in the right loving way, Lord Jesus, you would gently remind them that you paid it all on Calvary, Lord Jesus. Amen. Won't you come? Won't you come and eat of the bread of life this morning? Won't you come and say, God... You are my God. You're the only reason why I live. You're the only reason why I exist is because the bread of life.